Hello, this is Michelangelo Badio, and today's lesson is about string skipping. Now, I'm going to wait for uh, people to show up a little bit, but in the meantime, I'm going to riff out. Let me show you a little... Hey Denny, how are you? I see I'm starting to see a bunch of people while I'm riffing out here. Hey Brett, how are you? It's great to see you too. Danny, how are you? Yeah, I'm getting close to the camera here so I can see. Cynthia, hello. Giovanni, what a name, cool. Ricardo. David. Remy. And Dave. Okay. I can do this all day. It sounds like Captain America. Hey, Danny, how are you? Oh, thanks about the Twitch. Hey, Nick. I'm waiting for a few more people to come on, then I'll start the lesson. Now, I'm really shredding away here. But I'm looking, I'm looking to make sure I've got everybody, Christopher. Robert, Carlos. Okay, I'm Michelangelo Badio. I'm Joey, and I'm the star of this show. You ain't nothing without me. See what I mean? Now, we have something pretty crazy. You know Joey, but then people started saying, well, where's Bob? Who's Bob? I'm like, what are you guys talking about? I do have two hands. I play right-handed and left-handed guitar. So this is Bob. But see, there's something that you don't know. People online have been naming him Bob. That is his name, but he doesn't go by Bob. He goes by Robert. Now, here's the thing about Robert. He's a silent person. He's a very, uh, he, he likes to think within himself. So do you want to hear him talk? Robert, are you going to say something? See, Robert does not speak. Wait a second. This is my show. Okay, come on, Robert. Say something. See what I mean? And then now, now everybody said that he needs to have be a hand puppet. So now, Joey, listen. I know this is what I look like, but I want some skin. I'm like, what? And so now he, he told me he wants to look like Vince Neal. So if you see him... With a bunch of blonde hair going, yeah! Now you know Joey has found his collie. Now, getting back to the lesson here, string skipping. This is one of my specialties. And, uh, you know, I can talk about other things a little later, but let's get down to the lesson. I'm going to show you a riff. And then we can, we're going to put it in PDF form. And, you know, when we post this uh, later, you know, when it stays on Facebook and we're going to post it to my YouTube page too. By the way, please go to my YouTube page and subscribe. Uh, we're, we're just getting thousands and thousands of people uh, subscribing now. I mean, we're, we're up literally like 400% of what we were a few months ago. And uh, I'm posting a lot of content on there. And so, but let's talk about that a little bit later. I'm going to stand up because I think this is the best way. Okay, here we go. I'll pretend like I'm doing a Metal Method instructional program. I'm in the E Dorian position. Now, I'm going to play something for you. When you string skip, what you are talking about is skipping from, say, the first to third, two to fourth, third to fifth, fourth to sixth. You could even do more drastic ones. I've gone from one to six many times in my life. Now watch. Here is the riff slow. Now remember, this is an exercise. I'm not trying to play dark side of the moon. So here we go. Now, did you see what I did? I started with the sequence. Then I went down on the first string, then I went down to the third string. 
Now here is the thing that screws everybody up. Alternate picking. You have to alternate pick this. And so what I'm going to show you is exactly that riff. When you do this, play it slow. Slow equals fast, watch. Now, did you notice when I played this, a lot of times when you see an exercise, I've seen this so many times with instructional programs, the teacher plays it way different! Slow, then they play it fast. That's not the way it's supposed to work. So what you wanna do is you wanna first establish what is your best picking technique, PPS, potential picking speed, where I talk about the tremolo. Uh, you've heard... See how smooth that is? That translates. Ribbon. But see how fast and accurate I can play because I can do this the same way slow. But here's what you want to do. You want to do it bass backwards. I don't like to swear. You see me in concert. I used to swear sometimes, but you know, I think I can come up with a word that's better than a swear word. You know, anybody can can make an argument. Up oh, this, wah! you know, that's not arguing. That's just screaming. Here's my position on doing string skipping and just practicing in general. Uh, okay, yeah, PPS. All right, I see that. And so. Um, what you do is start a little faster. Watch your picking hand. Watch what you do. Do something. When you do this tremolo, that is your PPS. Then you slow it down and you try to emulate, you try to emulate and copy slow the way you play fast. It's that simple. And so, and remember, paralysis through analysis. I said this last week. You can't overanalyze this to the point of, my turn. Okay, listen, guys. When you overanalyze stuff, it's like you think. You're like, well, am I doing it good? Is it good enough? Does it suck? Am I, am I, do I rule or do I suck? Am I cool or do I suck? Do I suck? And so what happens is you're like, good, bad, yeah, yeah. I'm good, I suck, I'm good, I suck, I'm great, I'm the best, I'm the best, I suck. And so what happens is you go back and forth, you vacillate. And so you are vacillating to the point of like paralysis. Oh no, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. It'll never be perfect, I can't do it. That's not the way it works. Good is good enough. Do the best you can and leave it. And so the, it took me a long time to learn that, but I've never been a perfectionist because perfectionists can't get anything done because they are paralyzed by the fear that it's not perfect. And so don't worry about that. Do the PPS. Do, in other words, check your PPS. Uh, it sounds kind of funny to say that. Okay, check your potential picking speed. I didn't say that. That was Angela that said that. Listen, man. Okay, so anyway, go like this. Do the tremolo. Hear how fast that is? Then... So when you do that, then you slow it down and you start the exercise. Remember, and I've said this before, but it's worth repeating for the rest of my life. Technique, music. See, the goal is to play music, but the better your technique is, the more 
the different, the more things you can do to enhance your music. See, musical people will find a way to play music. That's just it. And so it's a hard thing sometimes to teach really musical people because they find a way to play music. That's an interesting concept because they can do something wrong technically, but it sounds really good. But here's the problem with that. I mean, there really is no problem when you want to, if you just want to make music. But if you want to be technically advanced, it's only going to get you so far. Your musicality will not win out if you have to play something as fast and as accurate as I just did. And so that takes technique. And then, and so all I'm trying to show you is technique. How you use it is up to you. And I've said this a lot, but again, you can't say it enough. The techniques are, I'm not prejudiced against any, it's not like, I hate sweet picking. It's a, I kind of like it. I didn't ask you. And so why do you sweet pick? Because you can make it sound like a piano just to do. Just. Just to do that emulates a piano. Now, why is it a bad technique? It isn't. It's an amazing technique. And so think of it only as a technique to enhance your music. When you do string skipping passages, now I'm capable of doing it with economy picking, but alternate picking is the best way for now. So here is the exercise again. I'm going to back it up. That's one to three, then two to four. Same sequence. See, it goes with the methodology that I taught in Speed Kills. Why? Speed Kills works. I'm gonna give you the keys to the Lamborghini, and I'm not kidding, but it's up to you to drive that car. I can't drive it for you. I can give you the keys, show you where it is, open the door for you, but you've got to get in there and you've got to drive the car yourself. I can't do that. And so, but I can help you. I can help you focus specifically like a laser beam on what technique you're trying to work on. Are you trying to work on alternate picking? You're not picking. Robert is. Robert, can you say something? He won't talk. He never talked. I've never heard him say a word in my entire life, and I've known him a long time. Listen, I can talk from all of us. I'm the star of this show. I'm Joey. I'm the man. Well, actually, I'm the hand, but I'm the hand that rules you. There you have it. I'm not even in control of this show anymore, so now I'm going to try and get back to If I want to play it, I'll play it, but you know what? I always do what you tell me when it comes to guitar. Good. So here we go. When you do this, this is the sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is a ten note sequence. See, again, it's a short sequence that you can repeat over and over in different spots of the guitar to create this long riff. Short little segments equal long riffs when you string them together. So if I want to go like this. Then I ended it with a little legato riff, why not? Why? Because Joey wanted to do that. I had nothing to do with that when he did that. You're darn right I did that because I'm going to show you who's boss. Woo okay, here we go. So the point is this, that when you play this, it is a sequence of notes that isn't long, a total of 10. Dun, 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 dun. Now there's a word in music called idiomatic. Idiomatic means what is comfortable for the specific instrument. For example, if I said that is not idiomatic for the guitar, what I would mean is that 
that's really hard to play, and it's not really meant to be played like by, by a guitar. Maybe a flute can do that. And so the point, if I said this is idiomatic for a flute, you write for a flute differently than you would write for a guitar. I can't write six notes in a row for a flute. That is not idiomatic for the flute. So what I do when I create exercises, I do things that are very user-friendly so you get the technique. And again, remember, Musical people will find a way to make music. So don't worry about playing in a pattern or thinking in a box. That's all, that's all mindless things. That, that, that's just prognosticators and, and pundits trying to, to show what they know to tell you not to do things. This is not about not to do something. Hey, Bill, how are you? Uh, this is about doing things. Uh, let's see who else is out there. Uh, Alexis is out there. Um, who else? There's a bunch of people. I can't keep up with everybody, but uh, I want to focus on this lesson because it's super important. Okay, let's see. I'm looking here. Okay, Scott is there. Uh, Sawtooth, of course. And so what I want to impart to you is if you focus like a laser beam, on the specific technique and you do short exercises like I show in all my metal method programs. That is the essence of my teaching method, my methodology. Take complicated things and make them short and simple and master that short and simple part. Once you do that, you can always make something bigger. You can always take something bigger and make it smaller. But it's when you play a short riff just this, just that alone. I can just play alternate picking. I can sit there all day. Well, everybody, I'm making Joey work so he doesn't spot off. Now keep working, Joe. String skip that. That's the way it's done. And see, I can do that. I can sit and talk to people. Like I was on uh, Twitch yesterday with Herman Lee. We were on for over two hours and 15 minutes. We had almost 90,000 people watch our show yesterday. And I'm sitting there just riffing on. I'm listening to him ask me questions. And I'm like this. And he goes, see, Michael? He goes, you don't even realize you're doing that. And, and it, it's true. You know, I'm, the guitar is part of me. Now... I'm part of you, and I play the guitar. Okay. So, as you see, uh, but I, I'm constantly playing. But one of the things that made my technique so good is I took methodology from my orchestral music instruction, my orchestral music teaching. You know, I studied Bach. I studied Beethoven. I studied Shostakovich. I studied Mendelssohn. I studied Schumann, Schubert. Uh, I, I studied... Ah, uh, Wagner. Oh, yes. You know, uh, even operas like Mozart's, you know, uh, where, you, where you had, uh, I'm sorry, you had operas like Rigoletto, uh, Haydn, uh, you know, just the list goes on and on. Vivaldi, uh, how about uh, Schenberg with tone rows? And so I know a lot about this, but the basic principles of teaching go back centuries. So I just did in Speed Kills, and what I'm talking to you right now, um, what the masters did centuries ago. And that's why I'm still here. I literally practice what I preach. I don't sit there and say, you do this. I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini, but I'm driving a Jaguar. No, you're not. Okay, see, I drive, I, I do what I say I'm going to do. I tell you things that help me too. So when you play this, and we will post it, When you see that, that is the sequence. I see hi from the Philippines, hi from Mexico. I love both countries. So that is the sequence of string skipping, and every note is alternate picking. I'm going to back up. I like to stand up. I, I've kind of figured this thing out. You know, I've got a high-resolution camera now, um, good lighting, and so... What I wanted to do, I think the best way to show it is almost like an instructional program. It's just get up close. Now watch it again. I'm going to play this slow. Let's get all the hands in the, in the camera here. There we go.
That's the sequence. Then you repeat it. Then you repeat it again. Then you repeat it again. Now do it. Now when you hear a little, uh, it crackled there for a second. It's just because the overdriver that I have on through the amp, uh, you know, I held the note out too long. I, I wasn't trying to do anything with it. I was moving around, trying to position myself. So it wasn't a mistake. So here we go. One. Okay, that is it. We are going to post that. Give us about a day or so. I have to tab that out and put it into a PDF file. Real simple. But uh, uh, it's very important to learn how to string skip. And now I want to talk a little bit about uh, my guitars here. You know, as all, most of you know, I am a sawtooth uh, guitar artist, sawtooth guitars artist. This is called the ST, standing for sawtooth, M24, and it is in this beautiful satin white finish. And um, it is going to be shipping very, very soon. We're talking weeks. And so a lot of people have pre-ordered. This guitar is in the $400 price range. If you go on the website and you see a $600 plus price tag, that is an upgrade that you can get for like the best electronics, different pickups. But I'll tell you what this comes stock with. A top of the line, German-made original bad boy Floyd Rose. You would put this Floyd Rose on any guitar. This is the top of the line. It is the best. And so, see? And so what I wanted to tell you about this is it's a great guitar. I love these guitars. This is the STM24 in satin white. And then I'm going to uh, bring out my... Uh, uh, satin black and that one doesn't have a locking tremolo and it is in the $250 price range again there's an upgrade for it so if you see a higher price it's not like I'm trying to tell you you know we're trying to to up the prices it's it has nothing to do with that it's an upgrade that's available to you that you don't have to get it's up to you to choose that now also too I have a lot of instructional programs on metal method metalmethod.com uh, and one of the ones that I showed you before were the jazz progressions. And I can't stress this enough, whether you're a rocker, whether it doesn't matter what style you play. To learn jazz chords is just... And then, you know, even when you're playing acoustic, I don't have it, but you're like... And you can go. And so what you can do is like you can tap it on an acoustic, uh, you know, and create percussion effects. But there's so many things that you can do with these jazz progressions. And and one of the things that you know I state from the beginning, I think of teaching guitar like the alphabet, A to Z. And, and uh, you know, I love, look at any exercise that you can get from any guitar teacher, you know, more power to you. I, I'm not here to criticize anybody. What my methods do is it starts you from A, not B, not C, not D. And that's what I did with these jazz progressions. The first thing that you have to do to start learning jazz is get acquainted with the vocabulary of jazz, meaning the chords, like just here. C major seven, C sharp diminished. Hear that? See, that's an F major seven. But see, this is a major seven too. But there's all sorts of ways to play major seven. And so, and and they are called inversions. All different kinds of ways. Uh, in other words, like you invert. You know, there's a, a tonic, a third, a fifth. That wouldn't be that chord though. But so what you do is you learn all, a lot of different ways 
to play the same chord. And it's so helpful. For example, this is an A13 flatted nine, but yet the flatted nine is on the bottom. But you can also do the same thing on the top. And then here is the, that's the fusion chord. They call it a slash chord. It's like you've played a C, but then you play a G over that C. So it'd be C slash G, like. Those would be slash chords. But there's another way to do that that sounds very fusion. I'm fusion! I'm fusing rock and jazz! I did this on this. Uh, my song called Time Traveler. Now, so if you want to get really in depth on the lessons that I give you, you know, I like to talk, but a lot of it is too, it's mindset. You know, guitar for me is life. Guitar is life. There, you know, I can't separate the two. Uh, you know, I, I admire Jason Becker so much that, that he still has this musical genius mind, even though he can't play a note. I mean, or Beethoven being deaf. You know, it, it is something to have your extreme talent taken away, but still know that you can do what you, that it's in your head. And see, that's where a lot of people uh, don't realize. Uh, there's a, there was an entertainer that's long gone named Jackie Gleason. And, and I, I love to watch, to see stuff about old Hollywood. And, you know, I just love to learn about people. Just, you know, I'll study Elton John and the Beatles and, and Led Zeppelin the way I study you know, uh, a Frank Sinatra or a Mozart, literally. Uh, you know, I just love to read about people's lives and especially really famous people uh, and, and entertainment from day, days gone by. But Jackie Gleason said something that's pretty universal. He said, and he said it in kind of a very, hey, kind of a joke. Okay, I'm going to say this. Listen, here's what it is. Now, just know right now, I got it. If you got it and you know you got it, you got it. If you got it, but you don't think you got it, you don't got it. If you don't got it, and you don't think you got it, you don't got it. But if you don't got it, and you think you got it, you got it. Do you see what that is? PMA, not PPS, positive mental attitude. If you believe in your mind, you can do it. You can do it. You know, Henry Ford had the greatest saying ever, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right either way. And so when you play these exercises, you know, again, a lot of people get paralyzed by fear. You know, they're like the fear that, I can't do it, I can't do it, oh no, no! Okay, four, four notes for sure. You know, I'm just going crazy playing because I'm confident in my ability to be able to just do it. See, I practice with a purpose. Um, I enjoy my life, as you can see. You know, I'm here sitting in my studio in my house and big guitar collection. But, you know, nobody gave this stuff to me. Nobody said, you know, God, Michelangelo, Badio, we think you're just so wonderful. We're going to give you stuff. No. And, and so, you know, it doesn't mean I didn't have help from people. I did. I've never been one to be shy for asking for help. Seriously. When I was in France, I, I studied French in school. You know, je ne sais pas. That's what I, I know. Je m'appelle Michel. A quelle heure est-il? You know, uh, il est onze heures de me. You know, one thirty. Or, you know, or I just, I know basic French and I really enjoyed speaking French. You know, I'm, a, I'm from of Italian descent and it's all Latin based, but, but uh, we, our school was, uh, offering French, and I took Spanish and I took French. And I was better at French than Spanish, even though they're both Latin based. But the point is this, when I toured in France uh, several years ago, I went there a couple days early to go to the Louvre. I have a lover of art. 
I, I have seen the Mona Lisa. I stood there in awe at this small painting. And then there's this gigantic fresco that used to, I haven't been to the Louvre in a few years, so I don't know if it's still there, but the Mona Lisa's on one side and this gigantic fresco. I could sit and watch paintings. I, I get mesmerized. I look at them in great detail. And, uh, and the Louvre was something else. I went by myself. And so, uh, and, and the point of this was just to, to look and, and breathe and, 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 and just experience this incredible art. The, and, and, and it's such an experience. And, and here's the point to it all. I got lost. They have like a tube system in Paris, kind of like England, you know, mind the gap. If anybody knows them in England, you know what I'm talking about. And, and on the tube. So I was, I was trying to read, and everything's in Fran French, which I actually admire. You come to France, speak French. Why not? You know, make sense of me. And, and so uh, we are, you know, I'm in France. I'm in Paris. I'm alone. And, and I'm lost. And so I went up to someone, I said, you know, pardon, monsieur. And I couldn't speak enough French, but I said, I'm, I'm lost. I'm, I said it very nicely. I'm trying to get to the Louvre. And he looked at me, he goes, he, goes uh, he just gave me a pat on the shoulder. He says, and he said in really good English, he said, this is what you do. You take this, you know, to here, you get off here. And I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to ask for help. Because when you ask for things, uh, and, and, you know, it's not like give me money, give me this. But when you ask, uh, you know, it's like you receive. You know, you find it. Don't be, a, you know, I'm here to help. And, and I've needed help in my life a lot of times, and I'll, I'll continue to need it. But we all need some help. And, and so don't be afraid to ask. And the other thing is this. When you are practicing or like something in life, you have to say to yourself, when is good, good enough? Now, I'm convinced, and I know Robert's not going to say a word. Just keep doing that, Robert. So I feel like I'm Garfield Goose here. Okay, so if you know who that is. This is what you do. This is the bar. It is not the perfection bar. It is the good enough bar. All you have to do is say, did I do the best that I can? Is it good enough? And let it go. That's it. And so, you know, because people ask me, well, what do you think about, you know, if you ever see yourself, do you ever make mistakes live? We all make mistakes live. And, and uh, so, the, you know, but what I do is I just let it go. If you want super details on how I do all this stuff. When you want details on this, go to metalmethod.com. Speed kills works. My instructional programs are fantastic and and I will say that unequivocally because I start from a and I'm not here to show you how great I am I'm here to teach you a lesson and so that's what we used to say in mental health and I'm here to, to teach you a lesson and I mean it sounded like we we're gunslingers from the wild west it was me and, and uh, Doug Marks and Jim Gillette and the ad but to be able just to do this just to go So you have to treat string skipping like you're just going one to two. It's one to two. One to three. Two to four. Three to five. Four to six. But do you see how every note can be heard. You can see and hear how accurate it is because I took it slow. I took a 10 note sequence and just kept repeating that sequence. One, three, two, four, three, five, four, six. And once you get it down, remember it's alternate picking so you cannot deviate from that alternate sequence. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, I wanna say something too uh, about YouTube. I release uh, a lot of content on there. And I, I really hope that you guys go to YouTube and see. I released my song Time Traveler on there recently, my version of Burn. Uh, you've got uh, my acoustic stuff, A New Day, and we are constantly uh, putting out new content. Go to my YouTube page, you know, just type in Michelangelo, uh, you know, no boundaries or whatever, but you'll find my official page, Michelangelo Badio, and uh, I highly recommend this. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my new album. Uh, I 
am on Rat Pack Records. My new album is called More Machine. Sorry, you're seeing one of the lights. Uh, there, there it is. More Machine Than Man. This is vinyl. It is white vinyl. It's bad. And, and I mean, it sounds amazing. We have 10 songs on here. And so my new album actually has 13, but as you know, vinyl can only accommodate so much. It's not a digital format. The CD, can we do this? Let's do it right there. More Machine Than Man, 13 tracks of doom, 13 tracks of death, 13 tracks that sound nothing like my other CDs. This CD is great. Chris Adler uh, does some guest appearances on drums. Uh, he played with Megadeth. Uh, he was the original uh, founding member of Lamb of God. He's a Grammy Award winning drummer. And then Victor Wooten did a guest solo on the song called AVTD. And uh, he is a four time Grammy winner uh, bass player. So I have some really uh, great players. Andrea Martingelli, Andy Martingelli, uh, who, who does a lot of things with Dave Ellison from uh, Megadeth. Um, he's on there. He's in his own band called Arthemis in Italy, in Verona, Italy. And uh, uh, he's an amazing player. He did a guest solo. And so also, you can get vinyl. You can get CDs. Now here's something. Let's do it this way. You get cassettes, and they're blue in the inside. They're cool. You know, I remember my nephew's 18 now, and five years ago, I was telling him around five, I, I showed him this thing, and he goes, Uncle Mike, what's that? I'm like, it's a cassette, Alex. And he goes, well, what is it? And I explained how you had to put this thing in a cassette player, and there was tape, and it wound up, and if you wanted to go to the next song, you had to fast forward and go, and stop it. And it took forever, and you could overshoot it or undershoot it. It took forever. Just you couldn't really go from song to song. And he goes, Uncle Mike, that's really stupid. I go, I know, Alex, but they sound killer. They really sound amazing. And he goes, ah, that's stupid, Uncle Mike. Well, now he's 18, five years later. And I told him, I said, Alex, we're not only going to be doing, you know, obviously digi digital downloads and, you know, Spotify and all that stuff, Amazon Music and iTunes. I said, well, we're printing cassettes. He goes, that's cool. Cassettes are cool. They are cool. And I'll tell you another thing, too. These things last for a long time. I've had, because I have cassettes from when I was a kid, literally 13, 14, 15 years old, that we were able to digitize and they still sound great. There's something about the particles on this tape. What, whoever invented the idea and made it, they made it rock. Uh, it's really good. Now, uh, lastly, I wanted to uh, talk about Herman Lee a little bit. Um, he's in the band Dragon Force, you know, really big band. And uh, we had an incredible Twitch session yesterday. I mean, we played No Boundaries and jammed to it and, and you know, traded off. And uh, we had a massive crowd there. And, you know, it is good to know, you know, that, you know, my instructional programs, Metal Method specifically, Speed Kills and all the other ones that I have, the jazz progressions are amazing. Even if you've never studied jazz in your life, this is the one to get. This is a beginning jazz program that's a Fantastic. And, and, uh, but you know, it was great to hear Herman tell me, you know, how much Speed Kills influenced him. And I mean, Corey from Trivium uh, has told me similar things, but you know, Herman is really an amazing guitar player and he's a great guy too. And, and, and you know, he, he loves to promote guitar and, and that's exactly what we did. So uh, let me just recap this string skipping. You don't want to do that. You want to do this. So now I played this a bunch of times already. I was actually trying to position my hand uh, that way to, to get it to, to show you in the best possible way. But you've seen it at least three or four times in this uh, lesson so far. So um, I'm going to have the tab uh, in PDF file. Give us a couple days. It'll be on. It'll be here on Facebook and it'll also be on my YouTube page. My new signature guitar is from Sawtooth. Let's get this in the camera. Sawtooth guitars are fantastic. Their electric guitars are great. Their basses are great. Their drums are 
amazing too. Me, Car not Carmine, Vinny Apice is the main drummer, and also Rudy Sarzo on bass. And they just signed a really cool young band named Liliac. And we're talking like the lead singer's 18. I think one or two of the members are under eight, are under 18. And the guitar player, I, I think, is 21. Um, they are really, Sawtooth knows what's going on. You know, they, they have great established artists. And they're also looking for the youngest generation to, to keep the, the torch burning for, for music and for the arts and for instruments. And so I can't say enough about Sawtooth. Uh, the amps, you know, you've heard these, you see the big stacks in the back, and then uh, you see the uh, tube 20 watt that I'm playing through. It just sounds killer. And then, I, you know, I run it through, you know, I have a, I run it through my system, and then I just add a little bit of delay, and that's what I always use, and that's about it. Um, so it, it's just amazing. Uh, the string dampeners that I use, uh, I would get it. They're under 20 bucks. And, you know, it really enhances your playing. It cleans up things and, and it, it does things for your playing that you don't have to do. And, and it, you know, some people might say, well, it's cheating. Well, the youngest generation are some of the greatest guitarists and musicians I've ever seen in my life. And th they use it, you know. And, and the reason they use it is the same reason I use it. If you can play the notes, and you have something that helps it play those notes to sound, to make them sound better, do it. That's my thinking. Uh, just do it. You know, it's not cheating because if it's cheating, then I would tell the prognosticator, okay, here's the string job I just put on a guitar. You play it. Now you do it. And then I'll take it off. You do it. Show, show us how wonderful, how wonderful you are. How, how, that not only are you a critic, but that you can back up the talk with the walk. And so, and then I, uh, I want to, um, so I've talked about that. I've talked about Metal Method. Go to metalmethod.com. Get my instructional programs. They're great. If you want to be helped and you want to learn in a way that's so simple and you're learning advanced concepts, this is the way to go. It starts from A. It starts from square one, not square five, not square 27.3. Like, or, or like uh, what is that in Harry Potter or something? 13 and three quarters. Uh, it's not starting there. It's starting at the very beginning. Uh, you've seen my new album. Please get the new album. They have great bundles. Uh, it, I'm really proud of it. it. It, all my albums are different. I, I always want to sound like Michelangelo Badia, but I always want to do a different version of myself. And I really feel that I did it. And I'm going to be on tour in Europe. Hopefully we'll, we'll tour again in the United States. I don't know if it's this year. We don't know. All my shows got postponed. Every one, over 60 uh, that were scheduled. And we didn't even have them all on my calendar before we could, we had to postpone them. So, but November 10th, I will be in Europe for five weeks we'll, with a band. We're going to be playing songs from the new album, my brand new double guitar solo, a lot of cool things. And uh, lastly, uh, you know, with the record, I just want to say this, I'm here to help. Go to my YouTube page. We have so much content there that's for free. If you want to get incredibly in-depth or really get something where you can play over and over to, get my Metal Method instructional programs. Sawtooth guitars, I can't say enough. I have to believe in something before I endorse it. Uh, I don't endorse things lightly. I didn't... Uh, you know, I'm not a company hopper. I don't just jump from company to company to company. I have to believe in the people that I work with and the and the instruments that I play. And I can't say enough about Sawtooth. So, one last thing. Ooh, I forgot to say this. We are going to premiere in the next week to two weeks an artist that did unequivocally the greatest version of No Boundaries since I originally recorded it. What he did was, see, I've changed keys. I've done multiple versions over the years. It's my song. I can do what I want. It's my song. And so, you know, and so many people know it. It's become such a famous guitar song. What he did is he took the elements of the original Speed Kills. He took the tapping section on my album and he combined it into the most technically awesome, cool sounding version of No Boundaries since its inception and not only that i gave him my my backing track so he could play along to he created his own and created some space and parts it's just incredible so here's what we are going to feature in the next couple weeks on my uh on my youtube page we are going to feature his 
new version of No Boundaries played with video. We're going to have the mixed and mastered backing track available to you and we are going to have note by note tab. This is No Boundaries 2020 and beyond. This is the absolute most technically brilliant version of it. It combines the best elements of all my different versions into one blistering well-played event. And so we are going to debut this, but remember, Sawtooth Guitars rule, metalmethod.com because speed kills works. Go to my YouTube page, Rat Pack Records, more machine than man. That's Rat Pack Records. Go to them, get my new album, and also check out Herman Lee. He's just such a, a great human being. He's a fantastic guitar player, and he studied speed kills. Ask him about it. But but he's a good friend of mine, and he's an amazing player. Dragon Force, you know, their success speaks for themselves. But anyway, I just want to say this. On behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Sawtooth Amps, Chromacast Music Products that handles my string dampener, my signature guitar pick, signature guitar strings, cables, uh, and, you know, of, of course, the, the record, all these things that I said. I'm Michelangelo Badio. Practice, 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 and don't be paralyzed by overanalyzing. Paralysis through analysis. No. Remember, good is good enough. And my last thing, remember this. Don't be afraid to play patterns. Don't be afraid if somebody calls it boxes. Musical people find a way to make music. Yes, he's right, but I'm still the star of the show. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night.